Today we're going to be talking about RV Life and their suite of products and how you can run them on your phone or you can run them on a tablet or a PC. Hi everyone, welcome to Tigner Adventures. Uh, this time of year it's uh, exciting because the weather's starting to get good out and everything and everyone wants to go on a little trip. And so we're going to be talking about trip planning today and we're going to do it a little different than we have in the past because we're going to talk about doing it on these devices. And we're going to also show it on the PC a little bit, but we want to show you what the differences are between uh, each one of the devices and how they work. Now, if you look here, you can see that RV Life contains a number of options. And the first one we want to kind of point out is that you can always try this software out for free. But it is an online based service, subscription service. So all of your devices do have to have access to the internet and a web browser. And if we just start scrolling down our screen here, you can see that they have a lot of members, 1.6 million members right now to date. Uh, but they are continually growing and enhancing what they have available within their suite. They have a number of different items already included. They also have access within their suite to campground reviews and also to uh, this maintenance tracker. Also within their suite of products, they have Masterclass, which has a number of training classes that you can uh, watch, different videos that you can watch on different subjects. And then they also have their RV Life community. So a number of you probably used to belong to our village uh, and they that company decided to close that down, unfortunately. But RV Life has always had this RV Life communities and they have this still going strong. There's It's not just for RVs, it's for every type of community out there you can think of, but there is a section that's dedicated just to RV communities that you can also check out. This suite of products is all rolled into a bundle called RV Life Pro. And if you see here, it's $59 right now. And that price actually will be going up in July to $65. So, you know, right now, if you're interested in any of these uh, products here, then this is the best thing to get. Uh, because, you know, for this $59, that's $127 value of different products that you're buying that's all been bundled into one pack. And once you sign up and you get that 25% off for this year, that means it's like $45 for your first year. From then on, if you set up Auto Renew, you'll get everything for $59 renewing each year after that. Price never goes up. So I mentioned this is a subscription-based product. And so it's ran through your browser. It can be run on a browser within your tablet, a browser on your phone, or right here, a browser on your laptop. So now if you look at these different ones, the laptop's got a lot of real estate here. The tablet here has almost the same kind of real estate. I mean, the screen is a fairly good size, depending on your tablet, uh, so it works pretty nice. And the phone is the smallest one, and so it's got the least amount of space available to do things on. But we're going to be walking through today how you make changes and how they've done things, change things to work on these different devices, especially with a touch screen. So if you have a laptop that has a touch screen, then what we're talking about today is going to be the same things. It's going to work the same way on all three platforms in that situation. Now, before we start, and let me point out a couple different things on the screen here that uh, just kind of the differences between the different devices. So here is my PC. Uh, screen it's in landscape mode basically and you can see on the side here I have a this is my summer 2023 trip and I can arrow down here I can move you know up and down and see the whole trip I can see the map over here on the side I can I can uh, move it around and expand it out I do have these controls up here that um, I can uh, minimize or not minimize but shrink it and expand it and I have these other controls and if I take the screen itself and I shrink it down, you can see that uh, the controls automatically adjust to the screen. And now I'm looking a lot like what it looks like on my tablet. So now let's go over to the tablet and just kind of look at what it's got. We have the same trip up. You can see that it looks a lot like the PC. And we're in landscape mode here. And I do have, over on the left, I have my trip. I can go up and down so I can just see what's going on there. And then I have my map to the right. 
I also have the icons on the bottom here where I can just click on map and it will just get rid of the trip details and just show me the map. And you can see I have the, the same options I had on my PC where I can do the plus and minus to shrink it or expand it. And I got the whole show entire trip option and everything. Let's now show you what it looks like if I go into portrait mode. So portrait is going up and down here. You can see it's readjusted and it's got my map there. And if I bring up trip, so I can still see my map okay, but if I bring up trip, you'll notice that it, my real estate is shrinking down considerably based on portrait mode with the tablet. So the best way to run the tablet is actually in landscape mode. And that way you get the best of both worlds. You can see it just like you did on a PC or a bigger uh, type screen. Now let's look at the phone. So on the phone, I am in portrait mode, just like you would hold the phone to uh, talk on it. This is how most people use the phone. So it looks pretty good. Um, I have the trip and the map icons down at the bottom. I can uh, go up and down by just touching the screen and moving it up and down just fine. If I go to the map, it shows the whole map here, but you'll notice that there's a few things missing. I don't have the um, option to um, show entire trip or drag routes or anything like that. So it's a little different in that sense. And I cannot see on the phone, I can't see both of them at the same time. It's either the trip or the map. So that's one difference. Now, if I turn it landscape mode, it does you know, work fairly decent. I can move up and down. I can kind of see the map in a you know landscape view. Um, but if I switch over here to the trip, you notice the trip is, is not a lot there and uh and then if you look right here i have to touch right up here to right by that uh, line there to get it to actually scroll it all and if i do try to scroll that i can see one line at a time so landscape mode on the phone is pretty worthless in my opinion uh, the better way to do it is to always do it in portrait mode so just keep that in mind between the three different uh, platforms that we're going to be talking about so I thought to start off with, we're just going to create a trip from scratch because most people aren't planning out six months in advance. They want to do small trips. And this software works just as good on small trips as it does on large trips. So we're going to just use the three different devices I have here and we're going to create a trip and we're going to bring them up and show you how each one of the little options works on each device so that you get an idea um, how to make it work on whatever device that you're actually using yourself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a uh, trip on each one of the devices. So I'm going to set up a PC trip, a tablet trip, and a uh, phone trip. We're going to be traveling from Sundance RV Resort in Yuma, Arizona. That's where we've been work camping uh, in the winter times. And we're going to go to Big Bend National Park in Texas. So that's just going to be a short little trip that we're going to do just to kind of show you how these things work a little bit, how we plan out that little trip and not these big old elaborate trips that we typically do, which is our whole summer. So in this case on the PC, if we look here, um, we're started off, I've already created the trip. So I'm just on the general tab. I've explained these uh, tabs in previous videos on how to do that. If you go right here to our playlist for RV Trip Wizards, you can see all the other videos that I've created. Um, but in this one here, we're going to go over to routing and driving, and we're going to just kind of arrow down through here to the portion where it says driving radius and driving distances. And so on each one of these, I'm going to set them up a little bit different. On the laptop here or the PC, I'm going to set it up with a driving classic driving radius, and we're just going to go based by hours per day, and we're going to change this by three hours per day. That's how the PC will be set up here on the tablet you can see i've got that up there i bring up the uh, routing and i go back down here to the bottom and i want to set this up with the advanced driving radius so you can see how it looks like on the tablet and then we're going to set this one up for uh, distance so we're going to set this one based on distance instead of hours and you can see that this all switched right here on the bottom of the screen now and our mileage is set for 75 miles 125 miles or in this case 200, but I'm going to change that to be uh, 150. 
and we're going to go ahead and save that one. And then over here on the um, phone, I'm going to go into the same thing, routing. We're going to go back down here to the bottom. I'm going to use the advanced radius on this too, so you can see how it works on a smaller screen. And we're going to do this one based on the hours per day. So just a little bit different setup on each one of these. And I'll save that one also. So if you look on the PC version here, I'm starting at Sundance RV Resort. And there is, that's where I'm at. And if I shrink this out a little bit, you'll see that my circle is based on where I can go within about three hours. Now, if we look on the tablet here, if I shrink this down just a little bit, you'll see that I now have, where in the middle there is Yuma. And there's different uh, um, mileage setups here. We had 75, 100, and 150. And so that's on the tablet. And then you'll notice on the bottom of the screen for the phone that we have the trip, map, research, account. They're all in little different areas because it won't all fit on there at once. And the, the uh, tablet has those settings the same way. So, but you can see a lot more on the tablet. But on this case, we're gonna select map and then we're gonna go ahead and move this map shrink that down a little bit and you can see that our advanced lines there this is how far we can go on one of these different roads within a three hour uh, period you can see that uh, rv resort in the center on the phone here is looks just like what it did when it was on the um, tablet other than the smaller screen so now let's go back over to the pc again and you'll notice that uh, out here is where my three hour time frame is. So if I go up here to the top right and I say, I click on this little tent up here, it shows me a generalization of where different resorts are. So I'm just kind of zooming in here and I can go ahead and just select one of these different places. If I know where I want to go again, I can always put it in for search for a location up in the search bar. But here I'm just going to click on this one resort right here, Desert Springs. I'm just going to go ahead and add this to our trip. We're just going to add it to the end of the trip. Uh, at this point, we're not going to put any, any nights in. We're just going to um, add it. So you can see that it's now added to the trip. And if I zoom this one out, you can see that, um, and I'll go ahead and turn these tent things off. You can see that the center point of my circle has now moved over to my new location. If we go to the tablet here and we Go in here we have it's basically set up the same way as the PC so we're going to zoom in a little bit we are going to go on this red line it's 150 miles out we're going to click on the little tent thing up at the top of the screen that gives us our resorts and we're kind of zooming in here we're going to pick out Desert Springs RV Ranch and we'll go ahead and just uh, uh, just save it to the end of our trip and then if I shrink this down the screen back down again you'll see how that particular area became the center you can see how now I can get clear down to this one section by Wilcox. So now if we go back over to the phone and do the same thing, we can just kind of zoom in um, and you can see our green line, which was based on three hours, is back out to the same area there. Now we can't turn on the maps by the little tent icon. So up here at the top left is map settings. Uh, we have to actually click on that. And then you'll see that the screen it brings up is all the different options that we have here, which is show campgrounds. So we're going to go ahead and say yes for that. And then we'll click on the X at the top right. So that takes us back to our map. And we can go ahead and, and select this Desert Springs RV Ranch and add it to our trip. And then at this point, if we go ahead and expand out the screen, you'll see that we can zoom over here and we're back out to Wilcox, just like we were on the tablet. So at this point, we're clear out here to Wilcox. If we go in here a little ways, we can see there's a few different resorts here. So we're just gonna select this blue one here, which is a Passport America one. We're going to add that one to our stop here to the end and save that one. And then we're gonna go back to the uh, tablet and uh, do the same thing. So we're gonna add the same uh, Fort Wilcox stop to our um, tablet and save that one. And then we'll go ahead and expand this out and check where our red line is. And it looks like we are now out to Deming, New Mexico. 
Okay, let's go back to the PC now. And you'll notice that on the PC, we set up our circle. It was just based on a three hour uh, classic uh, circle. This is what they used to do. And if we start um, zooming in here, you can see, if I move this over here, Wilcox is clear down here because that was the way that the road went. It took about that much time, but based on the crow flying, we are clear out over here. So it's saying that for our three hours, we can actually go a lot further. And so if I actually add, let's just add this particular resort right here. And so we'll just add that and we'll save it to our trip. You notice that it's actually three hours and 37 minutes that it will take us to get there. And so that's one of the issues with using the classic circles. And you'll see that it now puts us clear out here to Las Cruces. So let's go ahead and add this stop. And that one is three hours and 13 minutes. So not too bad, but you know, for our next trip, we're here where the, on the other one, we're at dimming way back over here. So you can see we're gaining um, a lot more ground by using this because our days are a lot longer or can be. So we have now laid out a trip on all three devices and I've showed you what the differences are in at least doing the trip and setting it up. So now I think the biggest thing is that I wanted to point out to you is let's just look at these screens here. You can see that this is the uh, trip that's laid out on the laptop and this is laid out based on the uh, classic uh, routing which gave us just the circle. So that came out with six stops. And then here is the layout for the tablet and it did it in five stops and it did it with those uh, different lines that was the advanced routing and so it came up with only five stops instead of six stops and you can see how that looks there here on the phone it was using the advanced routing also but it was using it based on hours so it was still based on basically the same thing as what we were putting in there before and the biggest difference with a phone is that you have these buttons on the bottom that you have to touch uh, to determine where you can actually go to and so you can see on this map you know the layout based on the phone and it came out with the same exact five stops that the tablet did so as you look through all those things really the biggest difference was how the routing was done um, as far as the way that it was laid out the actual trip created in the spots that we camped at and everything it all ended up being the same. It didn't matter whether you were using the uh, tablet or you were using the phone. And so you can see that you can get just as far as with the phone as you did with uh, using anything else. It's just a smaller uh, real estate, smaller screen that you got to deal with. So anyway, it actually works out pretty good. And the touch is no different than just taking your mouse and clicking. You're just using your finger to do that. But there are some things that are different. And so now we're going to kind of dig into those things that are a little different, just to give you an idea how it all works out. So I'm back on the PC here, and I want to show you how it works when you're looking at the trip here. So if you notice over here on the map, my trip's laid out just perfectly. One of the things I can do on the PC is that I can actually take my mouse and I can you know, run it over these different items on the left. And if you look on the map, you'll see that a little red line shows up, which actually shows me, you know, that, you know, from Sundance to Desert Springs, this is the route I'm going. And then the next route, the next route. And the thing that's important about that is that like if I rearrange desert in Alaska here, it allows me to redo those. But now if I start up here and I go to Alaska, it shows the red line going all the way to this Alaskan RV park. And then when I go to Desert Springs, it's showing that I'm going backwards to Desert Springs. It's very easy when you're inserting um, stops into your trip to get them in the wrong place. And then you don't understand what's going on. And this method here on the PC allows you to actually watch as you go through the whole trip. So it makes it really simple. I have not found a way to do that on the uh, tablet or even the phone. So let me just, let's just go to the tablet here. We have the same trip open here. And on the left is my um, trip info. 
and here's the map. And if I click, if I try to just move my finger over it on the left, the, nothing really happens because it's touch screen. It just wants to move the screen. If I actually touch on Desert Springs, then it actually redoes it. And you can see the red line here, but I can see it's coming from the left. That's about all I can see. And if I shrink this out, you know, then you'll notice that the red line just uh, disappeared. So it uh, makes it very difficult to try to figure out, you know, where your stops are other than, you know, saying that, okay, well, I know I'm coming from Sundance. And so, you know, if I click on this one, then I can see the lines coming from the left. So I know that it is actually coming from Sundance to there and that I'm not skipping Desert Springs to go to someplace else and come back. So anyway, kind of, you know, doesn't work the same. That's one feature that um, I really love having on the PC. And so if someone knows how to do that on a tablet, please let me know because I have not been able to figure that out. Another thing that's a little different on the PC versus the uh, tablet and phone is the elevation. So if you look here on the bottom of the screen here, I've got an elevation. I can click on it and I see my elevation at the bottom of the screen. As I move my arrow across there, you can see that up on my driving line there of where I'm going, you can see an orange little circle moving along so I can see the exact elevation. Now, if I go to the tablet, I have the same trip pulled up. I don't have an elevation item on the screen and this is the same on the phone. So I have to actually click on map settings up here at the top. And if I go down here to the very bottom, it says elevation. So I can turn the elevation on and that actually brings it up on the top of the screen. And then as I put my finger on there and move along the elevation, you can see that same yellow circle moving back and forth um, on the travel line below. Now the phone's a little bit different than this too. Uh, if we go to the phone screen, you'll see that we have map settings at the top left. So in this case, we have to click on that and then we can uh, arrow down to where it says elevation and turn it on. And then at that point, it comes up at the top of the screen also. And you can just move back and forth the same identical way that you did on the tablet. Well, that's the majority of it, but I did have one more thing that I wanted to cover. I'm going to cover this on the PC just because it's a little bit easier to uh, manipulate for me. And I just want to talk about, you know, adding nights to a stop, whether you're locking them in or just adding them and how simple it is to move uh, things around compared to other things that I've used. And so that's why one of the things I really love about um, RV Trip Wizard. So if you look here on my screen, I've got the trip put up here that we created here but we don't have any nights here yet so all i'm going to do is i'm just going to edit this and i'm just going to add some nights in here and i can say one two ten whatever it doesn't matter but um, it automatically shows that i left on 514 i got desert springs on 514 and i'm now leaving um, on 515 just by having the nights put in there and so let's go ahead and put in let's say two nights here and we'll just go through and we'll just put nights out here real quick. So I've added nights to my trip here. All the nights are in. I'm staying a, a total of 13 nights on this trip at this point. Uh, one of the nice things I like about this is, now we talked about moving these around before and how it messes up your driving stuff, but just let's say that for some reason I was going to just, I needed to go to Alaskan before I went to the other. I could just drag and drop this it automatically changed the date here for me that I'm getting to Alaskan on 514. I'm leaving two days later on 516. I mean, it's just that simple. And so as I move those around, it, it uh, automatically calculates those dates out for me automatically. Now, if I say I'm going to lock this date in here, for example, then as I have this highlighted here, I can uh, just click on the edit piece here. This is the same on the PC or the tablet. If you look here on the phone, it's a little different. It gives you a little drop down to get to these uh, little items. You have to click on the item and it gives you the drop down. But here on the PC, I'm just gonna say edit or I could just say lock this trip. So I already know the dates are the 15th through the 17th. So if it's just gonna, that's all I wanna do, I can just say lock this trip and it's automatically locked those dates in. So that if, for example, now I say, well, I wanna move Las Cruces 
up here so there's an extra night here or I even want to just add a night let's just say add a night um, if I try to add one more night here it will give me an error saying you know I can't do that because there's no space you know there's <laughs> we've got this locked in here same way if I actually just move this up one it gives me the same uh, message there's no nights available to be able to move that and so it keeps my lock in place and I can go through and edit that, take the lock off if I decide that I don't have reservations there anymore, I canceled them, I want to move my trip, whatever the case may be. But, you know, it's that simple to manipulate your trip. And I'll tell you, from the start of our trip back in April, it's now the middle of May. Well, actually, is it middle? Yeah, middle of May. Boy, summer's flying by fast. We have changed our trip so many times. And that's the thing that we love about this software. So if you want something that's very versatile, very easy to use, this is the software. Well, okay, that pretty much finishes it up. And um, hopefully that will help you a little bit in figuring out which device to use. Uh, to be honest with you, I mean, I could make any one of these work. Uh, to me, it's a little more difficult on the phone than you know, the PC or the tablet. But I tell you, the tablet was actually pretty nice too. So, um, you know, it, it all works pretty good. Now, I'm using, this tablet is probably at least six, eight years old. <laughs> it's a pretty old tablet. And so is the phone that I'm using here. I mean, this is an old six um, phone and they're clear, iPhone six, they're clear up to 14s now. And they work just fine. Now, one thing I do have to mention is that they do have an app that runs on the tablet or the phone, and it's for navigation and you know looking up some information and things like that. But uh, the app is not set up yet, okay, to uh, actually create trips. I've, I've been told that they're working on changing that around, and they will probably have that at some point down the road. But you know, at this point, I don't know that you really even need it. I mean, I guess it's just there to say we're like everybody else or something. But other than that. You can easily just go out and use the browser to create the trip just like I did. And other than, you know, if we don't do that, then we just have the app for navigation. Now, one point I gotta make is your phone typically always has a SIM card in it. Your tablet doesn't necessarily have a SIM card in it. And you may run into issues where, you know, if you don't have the SIM card in there, it will not let you do navigation. So it can't pull up the GPS and things like that and know where it's at. So uh, that's the one little, caveat to having a lap or a tablet is that you need to make sure that you get one that has a uh, sim card that you can put into it and then tell you using this as the screen to navigate as you're going down the screen i mean it's like having a big old tv in front of your face so uh, that could be good or bad but anyway <laughs> with that said um, i just want to thank everyone for watching and and let me know if you have some suggestions that you'd like to make and you'd have some uh, pointers to tell me how to change things up to make it work easier uh, let us all know make comments below we'll be glad to uh, check those all out and even include them in future, uh, future videos so uh, but anyway with that said uh, we're just going to leave it at that for now and just thank you for coming along and we'll just plan to see you down the road somewhere and if we don't we'll just see you on our next video so take care